horribly well and tanned. How have you got that in Burnley? Um, well, yeah, it's been nice. It's been nice. <laughs> my, my job's outside, so I uh, spend a lot of time outside. But now, obviously, it's the, just finished the season, so, yeah, I'll be, uh, I'll be jetting off somewhere as soon as possible. We've what just been you... talking Sorry. about the fact that you're... We were wondering, as you sat down, who the oldest player in the mm. Premier League might be. And at 38, you think it might be you. I think, yeah. I mean, I'm Bruno was at, was at Brighton. He just retired this summer. Um, and, yeah, it's amazing how, how quickly it's sort of gone, really. How many seasons have you still got in you, do you think? I, I don't know. I mean, that's something that we... You know, I'm going to be, I'm going to be talking about, I think, at home and, and see, really. With the boss I, I just love it, as you well. know. It's something I've always... I've done every day since I was 16. Mm. You know, it's 23 years I've been doing it now. And, uh, I, yeah, it'd be, be tough and when it does come to an end one day. You, you've written a very, very, very funny book, How to Be a Footballer. The other night you were on television for this BBC uh, documentary, mm. including Prince William yeah. and Gareth Southgate and Thierry Henry and others, Rose, talking yeah. about a lot of issues. It was, what was interesting to me is you make a lot of jokes about yourself and your height yeah. and stuff in the book. And yet, also, it was clear that some of the chanting could get very personal and nasty. Yeah. You've had to put up with it, like all footballers, mm. and that we might perhaps underestimate the impact that can have on players. Yeah, well, that was just something, obviously, I, the way I combated that when, as a young player, I'm all right with it now. Uh, but as a young player, it was, it was hard. I was obviously body conscious. I, I didn't look like uh, how normal footballers mm. looked in, in my eyes. You're 6'7". 6'7", six, seven. Six, seven, and, and obviously very slim and, mm. and even slimmer when I was first starting out. So, yeah, I did look odd. And, and of course, to a football fan who's quite unforgiving, um, you know, it can be, they can be quite hard on you. Mm. And I think it was hard at first. Um, and I think, obviously, in the documentary, we came up, I haven't suffered from mental health in, in the way that maybe Danny Rose had. Mm. And, and, and Prince William was talking quite openly about, obviously, losing his mother and, and things mm. like that. And... Um, and all I could say was my experience was was it was tough being being a footballer and and having that, and I was it was times where I thought, do I want to um, go ahead with this life and and put myself in a position where fans are going to be so cruel mm. and stuff like that? But the only way I combated it was was sort of humour really, and um, you know laughing at myself and, and which is the best way I think so. And and, yeah. and and thankfully I was I was okay at football, so mm. when they did see me play, it was like okay, we well, actually can play a bit. Yeah. So. That sort of helped me, um, but of course I've overcome it, and um, you know what I've seen through throughout my football career—not just mistakes that I've made or, or things that I've done, but also what I've seen from from players from all walks of life. You know, it's uh, it was funny. It was nice to to get it down and do something. What do you make of this uh, situation with Henrik Mkhitaryan? Because it's a real difficult problem, isn't it? Where you've got a player who's been outstanding for Arsenal in the Europa League this season. They get to the final, playing Chelsea. Already massive concerns that two London teams are having to fly 15-hour journeys, no direct flights, very expensive prices, suddenly only 6,000 tickets each. Now we have an Armenian player who is simply not able to go there because they can't guarantee his safety. Many Armenian fans not able to even enter the country mm. if they have Armenian passports and so on. It seems ludicrous to me that we should allow a player to be left at home mm. in the situation when we have two London teams and we could easily move the game to Wembley. Mm. Emily Thornbury there, the shadow foreign secretary, mm. said that would make a, a sensible step. What do you think as a footballer? Well, I think so. I mean, you, you fight all your life, um, you know, as a kid to get to a final. And then uh, the finals played in a, in a place where the, your safety can't be guaranteed. It sounds ridiculous. Mm. Um, I think, you know, if, 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 if there is a possibility to move it, um, I don't know how these, these things happen in the first place. You know, if there's a, if there's a problem mm. or a conflict, then, what, you know... It seems a ridiculous place to have a place? European final, well, yeah, where I, it's so uninhabitable to mm. get to. You can't fly direct there. It's ridiculous. Mm. Well, I understand that you have to spread out these games and you try and have them in different places. And mm. um, But if there's, like you say, if there's a problem where the majority of Europe can't get there directly, it seems yeah. quite farcical, really. And um, I Simply do... for the benefit of the host country. Yeah. That's what it appears to people. It's not yeah. for the benefit of the teams, mm. certainly not for the benefit of this particular player. Exactly. Or right. that and team like or the fans. Uh, you say that both the both clubs are from London. Is there, you know, is there a possibility to move it? But I suppose they'll be geared up, and it'll, mm. it will all go ahead there. But I do feel sorry for the player. I mean, terrible for Mkhitaryan. I think to the final. Not let, let me ask you about Gareth Southgate quickly. You've played for a lot of England managers in your time. Southgate mm. appears to have got this team into a really good place in terms of their team spirit. What difference can that make to have a manager that can achieve that with a squad? Yeah, well, I spoke to to Gareth obviously off. off camera with, mm. with me filming the documentary and I was just saying it. I remember obviously myself as being a player for England 
Um, the camp, it wasn't, it just didn't feel like we ever, um, we ever gelled as a, as a team. We, we, we didn't really do as well as, as that team. We had so many great players and, mm. you know, we didn't quite achieve what we, we, we set out to do. I look at it now, it just looks like a happy camp. The lads are smiling, they look like mm. they're getting on. They look like they're enjoying what they're doing um, and they, they're playing without any fear. And I mm. think there was a time where, when I was playing for England, we did play with, within ourselves a bit. And I think he's, he's got a, he seems to have created some, a club atmosphere there. And in terms of the, the next big tournament, the Euros, uh, when you've got a team that's got Harry Kane, Raheem Sterling and other very, very good players now coming through as well, I mean, you've got to have a chance, haven't we? I, I genuinely believe it. I don't think we're far away. No. Um, I've been saying it a long time, but I don't think we're far away from winning something. I mean, that, the last World Cup was just, you know... Loved every minute of it. Yeah. You know, it was amazing and it really sort of galvanised the, the country. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't think we're far away. I looked at the under 17s, uh, you know, the under 20s. We're, we're winning World Cups again and we're winning things and, at a young age. And I think we've got some real, real good, talented players coming through. We also have the Champions League final on June the 1st. Um, Madrid. I mean, we're all Liverpool, aren't we, mm. on that day, Crouchy? I, I can't no. possibly <laughs> comment. <laughs> <laughs> on either team. You're in a um, difficult position because you am. play for Liverpool and, and Tottenham. I am. Well, come on, yeah. you've got to make a shout. Come on. Oh, God. Where does your heart lie? Well, like? you're happily, you'll, ha you'll be happy with either result, won't you? I will be happy with either result. You're yeah, more Liverpool than Tottenham, aren't Sitting you? Sitting on a huge fence. <laughs> you're more Liverpool than Tottenham, aren't you? Well, I'll be honest, my wife, it, they're all Liverpool yeah. fans, big Liverpool fans. I've got a, You a are surrounded by there, Scousers. Surrounded no by way Scousers, you're yeah. supporting Tottenham on that day. I Listen, I, I, I'm going to say We all know you're not. I've got my Liverpool shirt arrived. For the Champions <laughs> League final. Uh, oh, I've got, 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 calm, no, calm, calm, calm. I've got it already. I've got all my lines. Oh my God. I'm going to be an official scouser for the night. We all are. Every um, Arsenal fan will be cheering Lots of on. love to Abby. Yes, um, thank you. Good luck with the birth. It's a brilliant book, honestly. If you only buy one football book, I'm telling you, go and get this. How to Be a Footballer by Peter Crouch. You it, don't even have to be a football fan <laughs> to love it. It's one of the funniest books mm. I have. We haven't got into the stories because you just buy the book and read them. It is, just take my word for it. Yeah. It's hilarious. And great to see a football who can laugh at himself. Thank yeah. you. Well, I mean, in, you've got a lot fact, of reasons to. But, you know. <laughs> Literally, the first page addresses the question you're asked most often, yeah. which is... Which, what I'd be if I wasn't a footballer, is that what you're going to say? Oh, no, that's no, not what I was that's a different one. <laughs> and what was your answer? Uh, oh, no, I'm not answering <laughs> No, I was going to say it was, <laughs> the, what's, that. what's the weather like up there? Oh, OK, OK. I mean, okay, literally yeah, no, I every regular. single day. Well, it's amazing, yeah, I get in lifts and people say to me, you know, how, God, you're tall, aren't you? As oh, if I didn't realise. Honestly, <laughs> what are people like? Just it happens stop. regularly. Just because you're over six foot. They're amazing. You know what? In the air, you're a very dangerous player. Uh, yeah. So it, it, all these things have a benefit in life. Closer right? to those headers. Would you have been as good a header of a football if you weren't six foot seven? Answer, no. Probably not, no. Uh, so there we are, every cloud. Lovely, 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 lovely to see you.